Hello and welcome to a Digital Media Academy how-to on sending your photos from Adobe Lightroom 5 to Photoshop and when to do it. My name is Kenneth Chan and I'm a lead instructor and curriculum developer for the teen photography courses at Digital Media Academy. I'm also a photography instructor at Eastern Arizona College and the owner of Kenneth Chan Photography. I've been using Adobe Lightroom since version 1 and use it to apply basic edits to all of my DSLR photos. In this how-to, we will cover my photographer's workflow for sending photos to Photoshop when you want to perform an edit that Lightroom doesn't directly support. Here are the software and tools that you will need before we get started. To purchase or try Adobe Lightroom, go to www.adobe.com Lightroom. And to try Photoshop, go to www.adobe.com Photoshop. Now, if you've been following this how-to series, you've already seen how Adobe Lightroom is an amazing tool for photographers. And I love that I can get 95% of my photos edited in Lightroom without needing any other tools to get them ready for printing or sharing online or delivering to clients. In my previous video, we learned how to perform many of those powerful photo edits in Lightroom. However, there are a few things that Photoshop still does better than Lightroom and a few types of photo editing projects that Lightroom flat out doesn't support right now. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the process of sending photos from Lightroom to Photoshop and back so that you can work on these types of projects. Let's get started. This is what the Adobe Lightroom 5 icon looks like and I'm going to launch it now. It will open up to the last folder I was working in. Now again, a lot of this video is going to be focused on things that I need some additional help outside of Lightroom to complete. Let's start with what's probably the task I most frequently need to complete in Photoshop, which is image compositing. Now this video is not going to be a complete tutorial on image compositing in all its forms. Basically any task where you need to take two or more image files and mash them up together is an image composite. This is usually easiest if major parts of the image are at least mostly the same. So for example, I have here t um, these two photos and I wanted to go ahead and put them together into one piece just for fun. Okay, so I basically, to do that, there's no way to do that in Lightroom and I'm going to need to bring these into Photoshop. The way I can do that now is to select the image and go to Photo Menu, Edit In, and it already detected that I have Adobe Photoshop CS6 installed. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that for the seagull. So it's gonna bring it into Photoshop automatically. Okay, so that's one. And then I need to go back to um, Lightroom and go ahead and bring in the other one. I can also use Command E to bring it into the default um, helper application, which happens to be Adobe Photoshop. So here I have two images, and now I just need to find a way to kind of put them together. Okay, so this image right here, I'm gonna go ahead and select all, and I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna go to the other image and paste, and you see what happens is it stacks it into layers. Okay, I have the moon layer and I have the seagull layer, and uh, the seagull layer is quite a bit bigger, so what I'm going to have to do first is take it down a size by transforming it using the scale function. Okay, now again, um, this is not a, really a Photoshop tutorial today, so I'm just gonna show you very quickly how I do these. Okay, so that's about the size I want, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that right about there, and hit enter to confirm that. Now what's wrong right here is that they don't really match. Okay, so you can do a number of things. Okay, you could take the eraser tool and try to erase it out. Um, Photoshop has a number of selection tools that are quite powerful, so I'm gonna try to select this palette of blue right here. Okay, I'm gonna use the magic wand tool and basically set a tolerance of a uh, pretty low tolerance here. And I'm gonna try to select everything but the seagull, okay? Did a pretty good job there and then I'm gonna invert that so I'm actually selecting the seagull, essentially. And now I'm gonna add a layer mask, and what that does is it punches out everything else that I didn't really want. And I can go in there and I can clean it up. But that is it in a nutshell, and if I wanted to, I can move this around. Okay. 
I could still resize it if I wanted to. So I could come in here to scale again. I can make it bigger or smaller. I can um, also rotate it if I want. Okay. So that's pretty much it. And so if I was happy with this, what I can do is I can go ahead and save it. Save. Okay, now I can close it. I can close this original one. And this one I didn't modify, so I won't bother to save it. Now if I go back to Photoshop, you'll see that I have a new document here. That is a composite of these two. So that's kind of the most basic example right there. Um, you can get pretty fancy with this, especially if you want to try this with a tripod um, when you're taking your photos, then you can do some really interesting stuff. So right here, I'll show you kind of the finished product right here, okay? Um, kind of cloned myself and my cats everywhere. But it started off with just a photo of the room, and then I took a bunch of photos in different places, with the cats and different places. Um, now you can see that little shift right there. That was not ideal, but actually it should still work. Okay. So what you can do is bring each of these into Photoshop and just again, select the parts that you want from each one. So from um, this one, I might just be taking the cat here. I might be taking me on the couch and the cat. And I'm just going to cut those out and basically paste it into the what we call the clean plate. And uh, when you're done, you have this. I think I should actually be able to pull this up in Photoshop so you can always go back and edit some more. So I'm going to have you see in Photoshop and see if it actually shows you all of the various layers. Now this is a very large document because the more layers you have, the larger the document gets. This one is going to be roughly a 10 layer document, nine or 10 layers. And so here's the finished product, again, that you're seeing all the layers visible. But if I was to turn all of those off, okay, here's the clean plate again, okay? And then I'm adding with each one, I'm adding pieces to the image. So this is a fun technique you could do if you happen to use a tripod, it's a little bit easier. And the reason for that is if I take all of these away and just show you one piece at a time, you can see that these all will easily kind of blend together when you eliminate um, elements of the images here. Okay. So that's just a little cat right there. But as you put everything together, you're not interfering too much with each other. So this is an easy way to do some composites. Um, normally something like this, if these photos were from completely different sources, they weren't in the same place, different lighting, all of those things, um, it would be considerably harder to do this kind of a, an effect. So I've shown you a number of techniques and things you can do that require some tools outside of Lightroom, primarily Photoshop, and I just wanted to give you a taste of all the fun things you can do with image compositing and all of that starting from Adobe Lightroom and then using the additional tools that will help you in your projects. To learn more about digital photography and editing, check out the digital photography courses by Digital Media Academy at www.digitalmediaacademy.org.